uh, through God's word and, and to take a look at the things that he has to say. Uh, today in this lesson, we'll be working on Ephesians chapter 1, Ephesians chapter 1, and we'll be specifically looking at verse 8 through uh, 10, but I'm going to draw uh, chapter uh, verse 7 into it as well, uh, that we, talk, we talked a little bit about that last week. Uh, but I want to, it makes more sense as you draw seven in uh, verse 7 into it as well. Okay, so let me read this. In him we have, re we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of our trespasses according to the riches of his grace that he lavished on us with all wisdom and understanding. He made known to us the mystery of his will according to his good pleasure that he planned in him for the administration of the days of fulfillment to bring everything together in Messiah, both things in heaven and things on the earth. Wow, what an amazing passage. Uh, I don't know about you, but but uh, that, that actually just kind of almost gives you goosebumps as you think about how much, uh, what we've been giving and, and learn how much that means and how rich that is. And, he, and, uh, and, and the words that he uses here are pretty amazing. So he, he says that God has given us wisdom and insight. Okay, now this, this, this I want you to hang on to, this wisdom and insight. Because uh, later as we get uh, a little bit farther into this chapter one, he's going to talk about this again, uh, about this revelation, about this wisdom and his insight, and, and he, he begins to pray for the churches as, 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 as that takes place. He begins to pray for the congregation uh, as that takes place, and we'll, we'll be able to, to actually enter into his, his prayer there and see what he's talking about. At the same time, uh, it, it's of salvation, uh, and, and God dealt with, dealt, indwelt us and about our salvation. Now, I want you to know something, too. I don't think that we uh, properly actually introduce the idea of salvation and we don't uh, teach exhaustively on the salvation and what people have actually received because we received the Holy Spirit, which also gave us the very nature of, of God living inside of us. But not only do, do we have the, the nature of God living inside of us, but we also have the mind of Messiah, the mind of Christ, uh, the scripture tells us. We have access to how and what, what Christ thinks, what Messiah thinks. So if we listen to 1 Corinthians chapter 2, uh, verses 14 through 16, it says, But a natural man does not accept the things of the Spirit of God, for they are, they are foolishness to him, and, and he cannot understand them because they are spiritually appraised. And it says, but, but he who is spiritual appraises all things, yet he himself is, is appraised by no one. For who has, has known the mind of the Lord that, that he will instruct him? But we have the mind of Messiah. We have it. And that's what he's beginning to say. No longer, uh, no longer we, do we have to wonder about what he is thinking or wondering what, what we should do. Understand, he gave us wisdom, in, in starting in verse 8, wisdom is the, is the ability to see the heart of things and to understand them. That John tells us that we shall know them by their fruits. That's once again a reference to the Holy Spirit. We're able to see the heart of things by the fruit being produced, if you will. This is done through scripture, and, and this is why it is so important to stay in the scripture. Okay, Paul said that, that we should appraise everything, that we are to appraise or test, test it against the scripture. And the Holy Spirit enlightens our minds through scripture as, as, bring, as, as being appraised. Okay, also, he's given us insight, according to eight. Insight is an understanding of, that leads what leads to wise actions, if you will, and are being able to, to choose the, the wise path to take in any situation. But again, it is through the scripture that the Holy Spirit will guide our actions. 
people may, may be able to read the, the scripture and say, well, this is, is, is what it means. But only those with the Holy Spirit can see how it applies and apply it to their lives as they live it. That's amazing. And it was a promise that Yeshua uh, gave to, to the disciples uh, before he ascended back into the heavens, that he was going to send somebody that will show us these things, that will show us not only the things and remind us of the things that he commanded us, that he said, but also will show us the path to take and the way that we should go. He also made known the mystery of his will. Okay, in in the first century, the, the, the mystics, said only a few could, could know the mysteries. But God made known his mysteries to man through his son, Jesus Christ, or Yeshua Messiah. The other gods that, that people served had no personal relationship with the people who worshiped them. How could they? They, they, were, they were graven images of wood and of stone. They couldn't hear, they couldn't talk, they couldn't relay things. But, but God, through his son, Jesus Christ, or Yeshua Messiah, has a close personal relationship with his people. In fact, so close is, is his, his relationship with his people that he's, he is constantly with them through the Holy Spirit. And because of his intimacy uh, and relationship with, with his people, uh, he reveals his purpose to his people through the relationship and his word. So close is this relationship that each person can come boldly before his throne and make their, their requests known to him personally. They, they don't need uh, someone to, uh, to contact them or somebody to speak for them, for they're like the, the, other, uh, like the other gods did. Uh, so listen to Hebrews chapter 4, verse 16. Therefore, let us draw near with confidence to the, to the throne of grace so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help in time of need. The word confidence also means boldly uh, because of what he's done. We need, we need not be afraid to approach him. But it, it was because of his kind intentions in, in Yeshua, in Jesus, in verse 9. Out of his great love for us, God uh, let us know his will through his son, Jesus Christ, and, that, and Yeshua Messiah. And that's what actually John says um, in, in chapter 1. Is, is the, he's, he's, uh, he came and dwelt with us. He came and gave us uh, what, was, what was said. Okay? He, was his, he was the word became flesh. You see, to know God, you must first know the son. Okay, Yeshua Messiah. There's no other way. Listen to John 14, 6. Jesus said to, to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father but through me. And in John 14, uh, uh, 14 uh, 7, if you, if you had known me, if you have known me, you would, would have known my Father. Also, from now on, you know him and have seen him. And God chose to reveal himself and his will through Yeshua Messiah, through Jesus. And there is no other way. And because of, of God's love for us, he sent his son, Jesus, Yeshua, and revealed himself and his purpose to us. What an amazing thing. It is, a, it is a view to the administration to the fullness of the times. That's what Paul says. God, through his son, Yeshua, Jesus, has revealed how we are to, to live now. We know that, that, that we're saved to be witnesses for Messiah, for, for Christ. That we are, are to take the gospel of Jesus, of Yeshua, to a lost world. We also know that God, through his son, Yeshua, Jesus, ha has formed us into his body called the, the church. 
are called the congregation. And, and he has gifted us through the Holy Spirit to edify the whole body, to lift one another up and to glorify God. So he, he has revealed to us, according to his kindness, kind intentions, about our lives as we live them now. But God also revealed to us the future. Just as he is, just as he is forming this under the head of Messiah, of, of, of Christ, now, in the future, or in the fullness of times, uh, some versions use, when the end comes, all things will be, be through, brought under the headship of Yeshua, of Jesus. All of, all of creation, man, beast, and earth, all of the heavens, there won't be one thing that doesn't fall under the, the headship of Messiah, of, of Christ, the King. Scripture tells us that every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that he is Lord over all. All, all who now will not bow will, will then bow, whether they like it or not. Everything has been revealed to us who are his. This is the amazing, amazing passage. And that's why I, I belay on it. That's why I so I, I want to work through it slowly because I want everybody to be able to see this. And especially as we go further into chapter one here, uh, see exactly what it is. And chapter one and chapter two are just amazing at what he's done. And I want to make sure everybody sees this. Listen, you have a great day. Uh, if you would, please subscribe to the to this channel and give us a thumbs up on on the video and uh, also leave some comments. Let us know how it's affecting your life. And also, uh, if you have any questions, please give us those questions. We would love to be able to dialogue with you and work through this through God's word.